Hi, I'm Ben, and today we will be identifying the Soul Knife Rogue. The Rogue class for D&D 5th edition is one of the strongest and one of my personal favorites. It is so well designed and mechanically viable while also giving so many plentiful opportunities for players to interact with the world even when they don't necessarily have magic available. Countless character concepts can be fulfilled through the rogue class, and now we can add psionics to the list with the soul knife. Soul knives augment their roguish talents with psionic energy, which manifests in psychic blades, which they use to duel foes. Soul knives could find themselves in a multitude of different roles in their life, being easily hired by a thieves' guild or even by a kingdom looking for spies. The flavor here is really powerful, and even though I personally always have just a bit of a trouble with psionics in Dungeons & Dragons, I think the Soul Knife does this really well. It's not super in your face, but it is very evocative and flavorful. Wizards of the Coast has very clearly made the decision that rather than revisit the Mystic in its current state, they are spreading out the Mystic flavor throughout archetypes for other classes. And while this does make me deeply sad, I do see Soul Knife fitting very well into the roguish flavor. In the same way an arcane trickster augments their roguish talent with magic, I can clearly see the leap of a rogue harnessing psionic energy to pull off that perfect heist. And we will see, even at third level, that Soul Knives use this psychic ability to become masters at their trade. Starting at third level, Soul Knives gain psionic power. You harbor a wellspring of psionic energy within yourself, which is represented by your psionic energy die. These are D6s, and you have an amount of them equal to twice your proficiency bonus. You also gain psychic powers, which may expend these psionic energy die on use. You regain all expended psionic energy die on a long rest. Furthermore, as a bonus action, you can choose to regain one psionic energy die, though you must finish a short or long rest before you can do so again. At 5th level, your psionic energy die becomes a D8. At 11th level, it becomes a D10, and at 17th level, it becomes a D12. You also gain two powers to use your psionic energy die on, Cybolstered Knack and Psychic Whispers. With Cybolstered Knack, when you fail an ability check, you can roll your psionic energy die and add it to the total, potentially turning a failure into a success. You only expend the die if you then succeed on the check. With Psychic Whispers, you can establish a telepathic communication between a number of creatures up to your proficiency bonus. You roll your psionic energy die, and that is how many hours these creatures remain telepathically linked. They can send or receive messages, no action required, as long as they are within one mile of each other and understand a language, though they do not need to understand the same languages to speak to one another. The first time you use this power, each long rest, you don't expend the die. However, each use after that, you do. So we haven't even actually gotten to the actual soul knives yet, and we can already see an incredible effectiveness coming from this archetype. Cybolstered Knack is actually pretty dang ridiculous when you think about it. The fact that you do not expend the die unless you succeed on the check means that you can pretty much use this 
every single time you fail at something with little cost. In fact, the ability ensures that you are going to be getting value out of expending that die. And already as a rogue, you are going to be rolling fairly well at ability checks. So either you're going to be in a situation where you rolled so poorly that it doesn't matter whether you expended the die at all, or you are going to be probably pretty close to the DC, but just missed it. And adding that just even a D6 will improve your results drastically. This ability gets even better when we consider multiclassing, but we'll address that later. Psychic Whispers can also be incredibly useful in the right campaigns. I think a Soul Knife would be insanely effective in Waterdeep Dragon Heist, where you will be in situations where you either need to be dead silent and can't have anyone hear you, or you are within someone's courtly graces and maybe want to communicate with other party members without that noble hearing. Already this first level ability evokes the idea of a psychic rogue and does so very well mechanically. Also at third level, you gain psychic blades. Whenever you take the attack action, you can cause a magical shimmering blade to appear in your free hand and make the attack with that blade. This magic blade is a simple melee weapon that has the finesse and throne properties and a range of 60 feet, though no long range. It deals 1d6 psychic damage plus the ability modifier you used for the attack roll. The blade immediately disappears after this attack, whether it hits or misses, and leaves no physical damage on the target. Furthermore, when you make this attack, if your other hand is also free, you can, as a bonus action, cause a blade to appear in that hand, making an attack with it though the damage of that attack is 1d4 instead of the 1d6. This is another fascinating ability for the Soul Knife that has a lot of interesting wording in here that we can take apart. First off, I really like that they allow the damage of the Psychic Blades to be 1d6 plus the ability modifier you made the attack roll with. This is fantastic because that means this is very multi-classable. I can already see taking a Battlesmith dip for this rogue so that you're entirely keyed off of your intelligence, really showing that psychic ability that you have. There is some interesting interactions with Hexblade, however, and you would need to talk to your DM about if you would be able to have your Psychic Blade be your Hex Blade Blade? It does fit all the qualifications, but you would need to determine if every time you summon a Psychic Blade, if it's the same blade or if it's a new blade every time. We will also see that the Soul Knife has become one of the better dual wielding rogues, because even though their offhand attack is a d4, it will still add the ability modifier to it, which allows that offhand damage to be much better than it would be for other rogues. And the psychic damage it deals is very good. That is a hardly resisted damage type. And though you are going to be in some dire straits, potentially, if you do fight constructs, it is as easy as keeping weapon on your person so that you can pull that out if you fight constructs because you're still a rogue. So you're still going to be doing considerable damage. There is, however, one very glaring downside to the soul knife that I haven't necessarily seen addressed and I only realized it reading it now, which is that these blades only manifest when you take the attack action. That means if you are trying to take an attack of opportunity, these blades cannot be manifested rules as written. 
Now, I'm sure this is a rules as written versus rules as intended thing. So if you are going to take a soul knife, this is something you should discuss with your DM because the wording does pretty clearly state rules as written that if you take an opportunity attack, you would not be able to manifest your psychic blades. Beyond that, however, I think this ability is fantastic for what rogues need. It really enables you to get off a considerably powerful sneak attack from any distance you require, and if you miss the first strike, you're able to activate that bonus action and get a second shot at that sneak attack. At 9th level, you gain Soul Blades, which gives you two new psionic powers to use. The first being Homing Strikes. If you make an attack roll with your Psychic Blades and you miss the target, you can roll one of your Psionic Energy die and add that result to the attack roll, potentially turning a failure into a success, and you only expend that psionic die if the attack then hits. You also gain psychic teleportation. You can expend one of your psionic energy die to throw one of your psychic blades and teleport to the space that it lands. You roll that psionic energy die and can teleport an amount of feet equal to 10 times the number rolled on the die. I absolutely adore when abilities build off of each other, so seeing new psionic energy die options is fantastic, and these ones are really good. The more lackluster of the two is psychic teleportation, and that is only because it isn't very reliable. Even at 17th level, when you are rolling 1d12 for your psionic energy die, there is still the chance you could roll a 1 and only teleport 10 feet. That being said, however, since this is a bonus action, this will pretty much always be better than using your bonus action to disengage. As it is teleportation, your enemy will not get an attack of opportunity and you are guaranteed to move at least 10 feet away from the target, which just adds to the distance that you can move away from them if you need. And then if you roll really well, that's just extra good. But man, in a bounded accuracy system, adding 1d8 to your attack roll when you miss and only expending it if you actually hit is crazy. And at this time, too, they have five. No. I mean, also at this time, you are going to have eight psionic energy die per long rest. So they are fairly expendable at this point, and turning a miss into a hit for a rogue can be the difference between that creature knocking them out and them taking that creature out. This is another moment where multiclassing can be insane. If you take nine levels in Soul Knife and then one level in Peace Domain Cleric, which I've already covered in Identify, then you could be theoretically adding this and a D4 from Emboldening Bond and a D4 from Bless to this attack roll. That is an average of plus 10 to an attack that misses. So effectively, you won't miss. I also think this ability is key for when you're trying to get sneak attack off on creatures that aren't engaged with your enemies, but are at range. So if the creature is 30 feet away and you're hiding from it to gain advantage to qualify for sneak attack, you really wanna make sure that first attack lands, because if you don't qualify for sneak attack in any other way, then your offhand attack just isn't going to get it. All in all, this is an incredible ninth level ability for Soul Knife. At 13th level, Soul Knife Rogues gain Psychic Veil, 
and are able to obscure themselves with their psychic energy. As an action, you can magically become invisible for one hour or whenever you dismiss this, no act required. This invisibility also ends early if you deal damage to a creature or cause a creature to make a saving throw. Once you use this feature, you can't do so again until you take a long rest or expend a psionic energy die to do so again. Once again, this is a stupid good ability for rogues. Effectively, just at this level, you could potentially be invisible for 12 hours out of the day if you use the free use of this all of your psionic energy die and the bonus action to get another psionic energy die back. That is crazy good. This is the same effect as having 12 second level spell slots. This is an incredible ability for rogues in any situation, whether it's infiltration, starting combat, or if things get sticky and they need to leave combat. This is exceptional for them and at minimal resource cost as well. And then the capstone ability for soul knives is rend mind. At 17th level, when you would deal sneak attack damage with one of your psychic blades, you can also cause the creature to potentially be stunned. They make a wisdom saving throw and if they fail, they are stunned for one minute and can make recurring saves to end the effect at the end of each of their turn. Once you use this feature, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest or expend three psionic die to do so. Once again, this is a fantastic ability and I cannot stress enough how powerful this is. Being able to go straight from your psychic veil ability, hitting with advantage, stunning a target, which enables advantage for further sneak attacks is incredible. And even though this ability costs more psionic energy die to refresh than your other abilities, by 17th level, that is still fairly minimal. I could absolutely see a soul knife using this ability two or even three times in a day. I think the only problem I have with this ability is that you have to have dealt sneak attack damage in some other way already. So you don't get to self enable immediately. You have to wait, but having a creature stunned on the battlefield is incredible when you think about the rest of the party who can also focus that target. All in all, I think much like the rogue class itself, the soul knife is fantastically structured. It builds upon its own abilities in an elegant and powerful way, and it actually has a capstone that I would be excited to get, which I'll admit is fairly rare for Wizards of the Coast. The flavor of the archetype itself is incredibly unique and really can't be achieved in any other way. And it also opens up very interesting multi-class opportunities. So in every single category, this archetype is a win for me. As far as ranking goes, I am going to have to give it five cauldrons out of five. I think this is a fantastic and very strong addition to the rogue class. How do you feel about the soul knife though? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, consider liking it. And if you like the kind of content we do here, please consider subscribing. If you are already subscribed to the channel and you want to find some other way to help us out, you can consider sharing our content with other people. I can't tell you how much that helps out the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you on your next short rest. As an action, they can magically become invisible. What? Ah! <laughs> Thanks, Tasha's. Why? Why? I feel it. Oh, the horror. Please, subscribers at home, help. <laughs>